26, local train. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. We live in a world built for people who hear. Hello? Can you hear me? Live from NPR. But what would our man-made world look like and feel like if it were designed for those who don't hear? Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. is a school for the deaf and hard of hearing, and they are redesigning entire buildings based on the sensory experience of those who don't hear. We've only just begun, though, to challenge ourselves to examine how we could design entire buildings, entire campuses, or even cities to be aligned with deaf space. Deaf people as a culture have been marginalized largely. We've been, as a marginalized community, developing our own culture, and that defines what kind of place we call home, how we claim and occupy space. And so we've begun to ask ourselves these questions and because of that, gotten a lot more creative, begun to think bigger about how we can find different ways to align our ways of being to our environment. The classrooms are oriented in a semicircle or a U shape so that classmates can continually visually connect with other uh, classmates. So if you want to be involved in a discussion, everybody has a front row seat to seeing. In a wider hallway, two people can walk in parallel signing with each other, but we do have specific distance parameters wherein we can observe the whole body and its signing. Hearing people, though, could disregard that kind of a distance requirement. They can be just next to each other, speaking to each other without that need for the visual field. Stairs also require a great deal more uh, visual attention to your footing. And so ramps reduce that. So if you're communicating with somebody while you're navigating a ramp, you can do so much more easily. Within deaf space, we have always relied on, you know, a heavily, uh, visible environment because we're not getting information uh, auditorily. So if you're sitting at the top of the terrace, you can see all the way to the bottom of the terrace. It's one distinct place uh, that can be unified or at three distinct areas. Color and lighting are highly aligned to communication access. Blues and greens will usually contrast with most skin tones enough to it to reduce eye strain. You may want to have more diffused lighting. Um, a lot of the lighting here is directional so that it can be aligned. But there are mirrors present to allow somebody to know and have a sense of what's happening behind them. Through the use of that reflection, they can know if somebody is nearing them behind them or if somebody taps them, they look up in their reflective space, lets them know who's there. Transparency of, say, doorways, so that when a person is in an office, they can either have a, a transparent doorway or passageway, or one that's opaque, so that I can see lighting and shadow and movement, know that somebody's at the door, but not clearly see who's there. Very often, people refer to hearing loss as an example, which negatively frames the whole approach from the outset. But let's imagine the deaf baby who has never heard, and yet is still described as experienced hearing loss. And instead, we propose a different framing, that of deaf gain. What is it that we gain by the experience of being or becoming deaf? Deaf space, I believe, is born of the idea that we have something to offer the world, that being deaf confers some very interesting perspectives of life.